Vespa asks, why is the Bitcoin block size only one megabyte? What will happen if it is more than one megabyte? Um, strictly speaking, the Bitcoin block size is not exactly one megabyte. The, the base size is one megabyte, but in fact, in Bitcoin today, um, after the implementation of segregated witness in August of 2017, the Bitcoin block size is measured as block weight, not size. And the block weight uh, is calculated using a formula. Um, the actual final size of uh, Bitcoin blocks is between 1.7 uh, and uh, 2 megabytes, approximately, depending on how transactions are structured. If more transactions have their witness or signature uh, component segregated outside of the base block, then um, the the effective Bitcoin block size is higher. So the more SegWit transactions you have, the more transactions you can fit in a block, because um, the more of the signatures that are outside of the base block size, um, the more uh, capacity you have. So why one megabyte though? Why not a hundred megabytes or a gigabyte or ten gigabytes? This has a lot to do with two fundamental functions that occur in uh, Bitcoin and two um, really uh, key concepts that apply to the decentralization of Bitcoin, both of Bitcoin mining as well as Bitcoin node uh, control. If you run a Bitcoin node, you receive every block across your data connection, and you then retransmit every block to all of the other peers you are connected to. So your node will simultaneously receive and send out uh, block information to other uh, Bitcoin nodes. And how much does that consume? Well, it's one megabyte in every 10 minutes on average. And um, because you may send that to three, four, five of your peers, um, you're going to do another four or five megabytes out. So if you increase the block size from one megabyte to let's say a hundred megabytes, then you're going to be pulling in a hundred megabytes of data every ten minutes, and you're going to be pushing out four or five hundred megabytes every ten minutes to other um, nodes. So that is in most cases going to cost you money. So bandwidth is expensive. Also, if your bandwidth uh, is low, it's going to create latency because it takes time to receive that. So how long does it take to transmit a one megabyte block across, say, um, a one megabit DSL connection? Well, uh, it's going to take eight seconds um, to transmit a one megabyte block, but it would actually take 800 seconds to transmit a hundred megabyte block. Um, at the same time, you've got to consider that all of these blocks add up. Now, one of the scenarios you've got to imagine is a node that starts on the Bitcoin network without having anything but the genesis block, and then needs to synchronize with the rest of the Bitcoin network. Today, that's a process uh, that involves downloading approximately 220 gigabytes of data in what is called the Initial Blockchain Download, or IBD. Uh, think of this as bootstrapping a new node in order to catch up with the rest of the network if you start from scratch. This is an important process because in the, in the process of bootstrapping, nodes verify and validate the blockchain all the way from the genesis block. And it's one of the guarantees of Bitcoin that if you join that work with no visibility other than the genesis block, you are going to synchronize to arrive at the exact same blockchain as everybody else if you follow the rules. That initial blockchain download of 200 gigs has two components. One is the node that's bootstrapping has to receive all of this data, and that may take hours, uh, days, or even weeks, depending on your bandwidth. But you've got to think about it also from the other perspective, which is if I'm running a node and someone connects to me and says, "Could I have block one?" I'll give it to them. Okay, great. My node gives them block one. Okay, could I have block two? Great. Here's block two, etc., etc., etc. If I'm seeding or providing these blocks because I have a fully synced blockchain, and the other node has only the genesis block and is trying to do this initial block download, that's a lot of data. I'm going to send 200 and 
20 gigs to them, they are going to receive 220 gigs. So any node that has a full copy of the blockchain and is willing to serve other nodes with initial copies is going to have a much bigger uh, bandwidth bill. Um, just to give you some perspective, um, during springtime of this year, um, one of my nodes that is on a hosting provider and provides initial block downloads to other nodes was experiencing approximately six terabytes of outgoing bandwidth per month. Um, and what that means is it was uh, it was syncing 24 full copies of the blockchain to other nodes. Which is great. It's a public service because if you sync 24 nodes, presumably they're going to then serve that blockchain to others, and you spread the Bitcoin blockchain. But seeding six terabytes of data uh, actually cost me $600 a month. Uh, I reduced that a bit. I'm still um, seeding a lot of new nodes, but not as many as six terabytes of data per month. So why is the Bitcoin block size one megabyte? Because both in terms of the current bandwidth, in terms of the total disk size, in terms of the total bandwidth required for an initial block download, and in terms of how much data uh, nodes will have to serve in order to help others do an initial blockchain download, all of these things have cost. And when you increase the size of the block, all of those numbers uh, get much much bigger. There are some Bitcoin forks that have massively increased the number, uh, the size of their blocks, or the allowed maximum size of their blocks, and as a result, a predictable result, fewer and fewer and fewer people are running nodes because it's too expensive to maintain. And what that does is it centralizes control over the nodes. It means it's easier to run denial of service attacks. It's easier to um, compromise the network and attack and shut down the network. It's easier um, to have everyday people stop running nodes until eventually the only parties that are running nodes are very large commercial organizations in very large data centers at a huge cost. Centralization of the infrastructure.